this message is prophetic for the times that we are in. The Lord is preparing us in this message as to what we are facing and will face in the days to come. Let's look at that again, uh, what the Lord shared early this year. Let's look at the Temple of Solomon from afar first. Okay, we see the chambers, the three floors. Can you see it? That is attached to the temple proper. The first floor is uh, five cubits broad. Amen. Then you go up to six cubits broad, right? And then up to the highest one, the, the third floor is seven, number of perfection, seven cubits broad. We are always going to a larger place, a wealthier place, a broader place. So from the second flo first floor to the second floor, they go by the winding stairs. This is the winding stairs. The truth of the winding stairs is this. You gain the maximum height in the shortest amount of time. Hallelujah. In the smallest possible space even. You know, when you are going up the uh, winding stairs, you can't see the end. Right? Amen. But you're going one step at a time. Sometimes you feel like you're going in circles. Sometimes it seems like you're not reaching the top and everyone will know what's, what's going to happen to the end, at the end of this crisis. Do we see the light at the end of this tunnel? I want to know what's going to happen. Will there be a vaccine? Will there be this and that? My friend, don't have to worry about where it came from and where it's going to go. God wants you right now to live one day at a time. Jesus says, there's enough provision, there's enough supply, there's enough wisdom, there's enough manna from heaven only for one day at a time. You are trying to worry and use the manna God gives you for today, for tomorrow. And there is no grace there. The grace that comes is only for today. You only have grace for today. So we are actually compelled as God's children to learn to walk by faith now, to tell ourselves, live in the present. I'm with my children. I'm with my wife. And I'm in this situation. I want to learn to live in the present. Believe me, you feel like you are, you are regressing during this time. You feel like you could have done more for your job, your career, whatever during this time. You feel like you can make more money during this time. You feel like you can do accomplish much more. You feel like all this wasted time. But if you live one day at a time, you'll find when you look back, you are making ascension. You are ascending higher and higher without even realizing it. This reminds me of that verse in Psalms 23. Amen. He leads me in the paths of righteousness. If you look carefully at the word paths in the Hebrew, it's actually circle. You know, for example, if you're going to bring the, the sheep to the top, if you make a direct route all the way to the top, it, it will cause the, uh, the, the, the sheep to be weary and to be discouraged and to, to uh, 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 um, you know, lose strength and, and um, get scattered. But the, 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 the wise shepherd does, does it in, in a way that the sheep don't even know that they are ascending. They don't even know they are making it all the way to the top. They do it effortlessly. How? By grazing, He gives them food to eat all the way around. He leads them in the paths of righteousness and they go in paths. They call it uh, paths, circle of righteousness. Literally, circle of righteousness, which I believe is the truth of righteousness that cause people, as they eat the truths of righteousness, they are making uh, ascension. They are, they are ascending higher. They are being elevated, amen. They are going higher and higher above their enemies, higher and higher above their challenges, higher and higher above all the obstacles where the air is fresh and they end up on top and hardly knew that they were making ascension, all right, without, uh, without all this, you know, stress and effort, amen. Praise the Lord. We can look at our lives right now at this time. It is the midnight hour. It is midnight. Daybreak is coming. It seems like there's no light at the end of the tunnel. We know midnight, night, midnight, night is the word Laila, Lail. You know, we, in Israel, they say Laila Tov, good night, right? Laila comes from the word Lul. Okay, Lul, the only time Lul appears is actually winding stairs that is used here in the, the Temple of Solomon. From floor to floor, you go by the winding stairs. Amen. So what do we do in the time of midnight, the, mid, the night seasons of our life? We don't understand what's going on. Just do one step at a time. If you are depressed, amen, just do what is in front of you. Look at the Lord and live one day at a time. Don't worry about tomorrow. Don't get into the what if, what if, amen. Just live one day at a time. When tomorrow comes, when next week comes, when next month comes, the supply, the grace, and the provisions will be there. The Spirit of God says, rest rest. The Spirit of God says, spend time with your wife, do it. Amen. The Spirit of God says, spend more time in my word, listening to Pastor Prince, perhaps, praise the Lord. There are many other good speakers out there, but I know what I preach. Amen. So you need, you need to obey one step at a time. And before you know it, 
obeying one step at a time, you are making strides, heavenly strides. You are making uh, progressive upwards strides, strides. And you're going higher and higher and higher. Amen. And before you know it, you find you're in a larger place. Amen. That's the same for all your provisions. God will provide for you. You find that what God provides for is larger than where you came from. Amen. You won't be where you came from. You came from the five cubits broad room. You're going to a larger room. And, but it happens so effortlessly, you don't even know it. You were just being obedient one step at a time. the Lord some time back, what is the reason why some Christians are sick? I found out there's only one verse in the entire uh, New Testament where it says, for this reason. Not for these reasons, plural, but for this one reason. Many Christians, that is, because it was written to the Corinthian church, many are weak, first stage of sickness. Many are sick and many fall asleep. But with the Lord's Supper, if you know how to take it the way God meant for you to take it, you will not be weak, you will not be sickly, and you will not die before your time. He took bread. When He had given thanks, He broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Now, why was His body subject to such treatment? For every hole, yours, broken diseases, pouring out from pores, your past, all that will be healed. Now, the cup represents what? the blood of Jesus. And the next statement Jesus said, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. We are totally forgiven because of Jesus' blood, not because of what we do. The Lord's Supper is a place where we are blessed. If you were blessed by this video, please feel free to comment on what spoke to you, hit the like button, or share this with a friend who needs encouragement. Don't forget to subscribe if you don't want to miss out on any of my latest videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.